Okay, so uh, this next problem, we use current division, um, and we're going to draw some phasor diagrams, which um, I have not done yet this year. Um, and a lot of what Chapter 7 is about is showing how you can use everything you learned about DC circuits with phasers as well. It's just now the numbers are not so pleasant, but everything that you did before still works. And so um, we know that a current division, if I have a current and it um, splits into two other currents, and so what we know from if this was DC, so this is uh, I2 and I1 and R1 and R2, and the current coming in is IS, I know that I1 equals IS times the other resistor, R2, over R1 plus R2, and I know that I2 equals IS times R1 R1 over R1 plus R2, or depending on my numbers, it might be easier to use the fact that I1 plus I2 equals IS, and that's my uh, KCL right there. So once I have I1, I can find I2 either this way or this way. Uh, it doesn't matter. Now, um, if I am in the phasor domain, it works exactly the same way. It's just my phasor current, I1, will equal my I source times the Im other impedance, Z2, over Z1 plus Z2. You just use impedances instead of resistances, and it works fine. So it doesn't matter if it's a capacitor, an inductor, or a resistor. Um, you just, once you've transformed it, um, you just use that. So, we have um, our IS is splitting up into the part that goes through the capacitor and the part that goes through the resistor. Um, and uh, so in the capacitor part, that is the imaginary part of um, the, the impedance and the resistor is the, the real part. Um, but we can say that IC equals IS times 4 ohms over 4 minus J3. Um, and then I will just, and you can practice on this, the fraction buttons right here. So I have 4 over 4 minus, and the J is, it's the pi E I button over here. You press it three times to get to the I. 4 minus I3. And I don't want the fractions, so I'll press the little button right above it to turn it into decimal. So I have IC equals IS times um, Is that what y'all got? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think I have the wrong thing right now. 0.64 plus 0.48 plus J 0.48 um, and then IR will equal one minus points, not one, yeah, yeah, one, because I have multiplying by IS. 
one minus 0.64 plus uh, J.48 times IS. So that's, that's equivalent to saying it's IS minus 0.64 plus J.48 IS. And then factor out the IS. And that gets me minus 0.36 plus J.48 is IR. Now, um, if I, the, for the first part of this, it says to express it in terms of IS. Okay, I did that. And then it says using IS as a reference, generate a relative phasor diagram. Well, to do that, um, I need to get the angles for these, the phases for these. And so um, relative to IS, so I'm going to turn this to polar. So that's on the TI-36X, that's second and complex, and go down to number four. Why is it a one minus for IR? Well, did you see what I wrote above that? So it was, I factored out the IS. So if I have IS coming into here and to here, and I have whatever this one is, this is IR, and this is I, or this is I, IC and this is IR. Then IR equals IS minus IC just by KCL. The current coming in has to equal the current going out. So IS equals IR plus IC. So current coming in equals current going out. So IR equals IS minus IC. And then I had that, that's IS, I had that IC was 0.64 plus J.48 IS. And then if you factor out an IS, you have 1 minus 0.64 Minus 0.64 J.48 plus J.48 This is what I have there. So do you see where it came from now? Yes. So my my goal was to be lazy because in in my head I was thinking, oh, I see that. I can just subtract it from one, and that's just that's easier for me yeah, to do. It is actually yeah. Good. I just wasn't. I was so ready for the other formula. Right. Um, I probably should have done the other formula rather than taking a shortcut, but I like shortcuts. Okay, so that was IS. Okay, so then um, I was going to take my 0.64 plus uh, 0.48I and change that to polar. Um, and when I did that, I get that IC equals 0.8 angle 36.9 degrees times IS, whatever IS is, and IR. Now this time, um, since I'm typing in my imaginary number, I'm putting it in parentheses. So negative 0.36 plus I 0.48, close parentheses, and then I'll go to the complex menu. So second complex and down to change to R angle theta. And I get 0.6 angle 126.8 or 0.9 degrees. Good. 
negative 53.13. because I forgot to make this, when I subtracted here, I didn't distribute this minus sign. That's, that should have been a minus sign. So this should have been negative 0.36 minus J.48. Oops. Minus J.48. And am I still not getting the right number? If I do 1 minus this. 0.6, negative 126. From that, no one. I think I have a mistake somewhere. Yeah, some, okay, so this is positive, 1 minus 0. 0.6, okay, so yeah. my shortcut was a complete disaster. Not only did I have to explain the shortcut, which made it not that short after all, I had the signs wrong in both of my numbers, so it should be uh, 0. 0.36 minus J.48 IS, and now when I do that, Now I get the right answer. So negative 53.1 degrees times IS. So now on my phasor diagram, this is relative to IS. And so let's put IS in the positive X axis because that's where we're used to uh, measuring degrees from. So relative to IS, I see and um, IS um, this is one IS, and so it makes sense that if when I make these other two that are going to be at right angles to each other, um, that they would be 0 0.8 and 0 0.6, it's going to make a, a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so 0 0.8, 0 0.6, and 1. So this one is going to be at about, at 30, about 37 degrees. And that's IC. And this one is a little bit shorter at negative 53 degrees. And you can see that they make a right angle right there. And if we um, wanted to find out this height right here, that would be the sine of 37, um, uh, it's IC times the sine of 37 would be that height right there, and uh, so that would be this number, so it would be 0.8 times the sine of 37, which gets 0.48. So this distance is 0.48, and this distance will be minus 0.48. So that's our phasor diagram. Then it says analyze the circuit to determine IS and then generate the absolute phasor diagram with IC, IR, and IS. So now it's not in terms of IS, we have to figure out what IS is. So if we go back and look at our original circuit, we see that our impedances, we have these two in parallel, and those two together in parallel are in series with that three ohm resistor. So my total impedance is going to be my three ohm resistor plus 
uh, minus j3 and 4 in parallel. So that would be 3 plus, and then I can do, there's just two of them, I can do product over sum, minus j12 over minus j3 uh, plus 4. So that's 3 plus minus J12 over minus J3 plus 4. And then the button above the enter gives it to me as a decimal. 4.44 minus 1.92 J. Or if I wanted it in polar form, Four point eight four angle negative twenty three point four degrees. And that is just the impedance, which I don't think I wrote that down separately. So now we know that um, V equals IZ. And we know our total voltage is two, um, two square root two angle 45 degrees. Equals IS, because that's our total current, times 4.84 angle negative 23.4 degrees or IS equals 2 square root 2 angle 45 degrees, not square root, angle 45 degrees over 4.84 angle negative 23.4 degrees. So I'll do a fraction, 2 second square root 2, and then to get the angle, it's in uh, the complex menu, angle 45 over 4.84, complex menu, angle negative 23.4. I think on the 84 you might have to put when you use this notation, you might have to put it in parentheses. I'm not sure. Um, and this gets me that IS is 0.215 plus J.543. So 84. I do alpha y equals, I get the fraction menu. Oh, except you can't use, you can't use, um, you can't use complex numbers on a fraction. Uh, math, I mean, just on the calculator, of course, you can use complex numbers on a fraction. Oh, nope. Okay, so um, in order to do this, you would just have to you put it. You'd have to do it in uh, the complete polar format. It doesn't. It doesn't have the angle. So the uh, the TI Inspire has the angle, but you would just have to do it with the E or in rectangular form. Rectangular form is probably a little easier. So I'll just go back. So in rectangular form, and I we'll want to use parentheses, I was, IS was 0.215 plus 
I point five four four divided by and then in parentheses our impedance was what was the impedance in rectangular? It was 4.44 minus 1.92J. Which gets that number, which if I then change that Polar is that the same answer? Uh, did I not change this one to polar yet? I didn't. Okay, so and then IS. Um, and polar would be that's the right answer point five eight four angle sixty eight point four um I think I did something wrong on the other calculator, but I'm not going to redo it. This is the this is the right angle right here, and then, yeah, and then I C. If you remember from back up here, we had that We had what IC was in terms of IS. So IC was 0.8 angle 36.9 times IS, which we just found was 0.84 angle 68.4. And IR is 0.6 angle negative 53.1 times IS, which is 0.84 angle 68.4 and if you do those uh, I'm just going to get tell you what the answers are here IC comes out to be 0.47 angle 105.3 degrees and IR equals 0.35 angle 15.5 three degrees, yep, three degrees. So then if I draw my phasor diagram, IS was at an angle is 0.58, no, IS, IS, 0.584 at an angle of 68.4. So here's about 68.4. And that's going to be 0.5, about, I'm going to say that's about 0.6, that's IS. And then IC is an, an angle of 105, and it's 0.47, so it's a little shorter. So that whole angle is 105, and that's IC. And then IR is it at an angle of 15 so that would be right there and it was uh, 0.3 so I made it too long and that's IR and you'll see that once again they are at right angles to each other because they have to
So any questions on any of that? Are we having fun? Not as fun as math can be. <laughs> to me, it's, uh, this is too much calculations. I don't, yeah. don't want to do all these numbers. Uh, you know, too many numbers. It's not hard work. It just takes forever. It just takes a long time. And there's so many places to make mistakes. <laughs>